six people at one time for England, eight for Scotland, and in Guernsey you can form what is called a bubble. Uh, this is all part of the easing of lockdown, but how fast that easing happens depends on where you live. Now, to help us make sense of lockdown rules in place and their comments on them, uh, we're joined by journalist Matthew Wright and uh, Dr Zoe there um, as well, both of you. Yes, yeah, so we're starting. Good morning, both of you. Um, morning. So, with this new rulings, we can meet, but we still need to distance. So, in Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland, we've been told that when households meet, they must still maintain social distancing. Um, so, families and friends can meet, but they can't hug. Uh, what do you think of this, Zoe? Why is it still important to keep the two-metre distancing, even within a family group? Well, it's absolutely crucial. And then the other rule that is the same across all the different countries as well is that these meetings must be outdoors. And this is because the virus is still very much out there. It's still about 8,000 people every day are getting the virus. So although these lockdown measures are being released, which is really important, there are kind of two aims. One aim is to increase social connectivity, get the economy going, but the other is to keep the R value down and whenever you release anything that r is going to creep up slightly so the scientists will have looked at all the different ways in which they can change the rules to try and keep the r down whilst increasing social connectivity and different ministers have chosen slightly different rules but the main two things are that two meters distance if we keep two meters away from each other number one it's highly unlikely that we are going to transmit the virus from one person to another, as long as we're outdoors as well. And number two, with the new test and trace, it's one way of protecting ourselves from being put back into self-isolation for 14 days. Because if we haven't had contact with anybody at a distance closer than two metres, then we're not going to get one of those phone calls saying that we've been a close contact. Matthew, um, my worry about all of this is having separate rules for England, Scotland, Wales just announced some this morning, Northern Ireland. Um, it can be more bespoke, uh, that the care and the conditions can be more tailored, but it can also be more confusing as we talk about this generally. I can understand. I mean, in one sense, I'm quite grateful that we're, we are a, a nation of, of home nations, a United Kingdom of home nations, sometimes not that united, because the R8 is different in different parts of the country. 18 councils in England, I believe, have still to face their, their COVID peaks, which is a concern. And I'm with you, Eamon. I mean, different home nations going different ways. I, I understand the politics and, and the thinking behind it. However, if we accept that a chap like Dominic Cummings, one of the biggest brains uh, of all time from some of the press I've read about him, certainly a huge intellect, that he didn't seem to understand the basic rules a month ago, what hope for the British people in each home nation, each doing different rules, all changing on a different basis? And I, I was I alone in watching Patrick Valance uh, and Christopher Whitty yesterday looking. They didn't say anything. They weren't allowed to say most of it. They weren't allowed to talk in a lot of it. But they looked distinctly uncomfortable, I thought, with Boris pushing forward on some of this. Well, we were saying uh, we were saying rules in different in, in different uh, places. Yesterday, uh, it was announced in England you can meet in, of groups and six in the garden. Um, so, Zoe, I think gorgeous weather predicted for the weekend. Does this concern you now that people are going to think, oh my goodness, this has been lifted? We can get out and get out in the garden. What about going if you can't access the back of somebody's house if they have a garden? Are you okay to go through the house? Can you go to the loo? Well, I think one of the concerns here, and something I don't think has been talked about enough, is that there are two ways in which this virus transmits. One is through respiratory droplets, that's why you need to be two metres away, and the other is through direct touch. So touching a person, of course, you can tr transmit the virus, but if we all touch the same things, then that's another way. So I think, you know, your bottle of tomato ketchup, that is going to be the thing that could be transmitting this virus between all those six people. And then, of course, bathrooms as well. So this is the reason why, up until now, meetings have had to be in public places. Because, of course, if you go around to your friend's house or your family member's house, you're going to need the loo and you're going to use the loo. So it was said yesterday, you can use the loo, 
but you must wipe down all surfaces afterwards. So I would say to people, you know, if people are going to be using your bathroom, make sure you have two things in there, disinfectant sprays and wipes, and people must wipe down every single surface they've touched, door handles, the flusher, the toilet lid, the sink. And the second thing is have paper towels, single use rather than, rather than other towels. Of course, the other thing people can do is walk through your house to get to the back garden or to get to the backyard and they mustn't touch anything on the way because touching surfaces or touching things like knives and forks, bottles of ketchup, that is how this virus is going to transmit. So is, but if you're having a barbecue, they will touch glassware, plates, knives and forks. So what do you do with that? Well, I mean, the advice really, I think, should be barbecues are probably not the best idea. People should really take their own food. They should take their own cutlery. They should take their own glassware. Okay, um, does that put you in the mood? Does that whet your appetite for a barbecue? Or put you off? Uh, it, it doesn't whet my, my appetite, no. But what, 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 what she's saying that, that is absolutely spot on. This is what we need to do to protect ourselves and to protect other people. The downside is, is that there is already loads of evidence out there that a significant proportion of the population just ain't going to do it. And I'm not talking about Dominic Cummings. I'm talking, I think the Sun is reporting one in seven people have been flouting lockdown rules. I've been to one shop in the last month, OK? It was a petrol station with an M&S attached. And inside there, despite the best efforts of the shopkeepers, everyone was breaking the rules. I saw people touching all this stuff. Everyone was getting much closer than two metres. I found it terrifying. I just... I, I love the idea of easing lockdown. I just think human nature, human nature is going to work against this, and that's troubling. The, 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 they are not stupid people who are giving this advice. So I put it to you, it must be deliberate. They must know this is going to happen. They must know this releases to a certain uh, herd immunity. And presumably somewhere, somebody somewhere is thinking there has to be an acceptable level yep. of infection or fatality that we can absorb as a country. Well, I think we have to remember that these very clever scientists that are working and advising the government, they study and they track and they model the behaviour of the virus, but they also study, track and model the behaviour of human beings. And they know, actually, that if they set the rules here, then the people, the great people of the UK will kind of, their behaviour will be somewhere around here. They know Matthew, that. Matthew? Yeah, I, I just wondered if I could I'd ask a question because uh, it, it didn't seem to be answered properly at yesterday's uh, coronavirus briefing. Uh, I, I just wanted, Doctor, when they say about the, this uh, track and trace, if you travel on public transport, uh, you will come into contact with people closer than two metres. You won't know their names. If you then develop symptoms and someone you get, you get the call from track and trace, how are you supposed to detail the names of the people that were sitting next to you on, on, the, on the underground or on the bus or the train for more than 15 minutes? And I, and I think this is where we're going to highly depend upon the app, which we know is on the Isle of Wight, and hopefully in early June we're going to have it in the UK. And that's where the app provides a crucial part of the track and trace system. Because I think at the moment, for most of us, we know who we've had close contact with. It's people in our household. It's maybe people at work. I think potentially this weekend, you know, it could be a taxi driver. That's very difficult. But once we start going back into society, using public transport, being in shops that might be busy, that's when we're not going to be able to remember all those people we've had contact with. And that's when, the, it, when the app will become isn't the, isn't the truth, guys, that we're all on our own when we've got to use our own defences, our own common sense in all of this and look after number one? I think, you know, with all the comings and goings that's been going on and people saying, therefore, why sh should I do it? I think there are two really clear reasons why we should all do this. One, we're going to be meeting up with people that we actually like, probably our favourite people. So first and foremost, to protect them and ourselves from getting the virus, but also to protect ourselves from having to self-isolate. Nobody wants to have to be going to self-isolation for 14 days. The best way to prevent that from having to happen is just stay two metres away from everybody. Final word, that's Matthew. If, well, that's if you can persuade people to self-isolate for 14 days. They talk about individual lockdowns. I've got a small child, which means I can, I can cite the Dominic Cummings defence. I can do what I like in the best interest of my child. And there's going to be hundreds of thousands and millions of people out there that I suspect Eamon may very well put themselves first. But, of course, that puts other people at risk. Well, we see this doesn't come into effect until Monday, does it? So, you know, it's a beautiful weather, uh, weather forecast yeah. for the weekend. So watch this space, as they say. Thank you both very much. Stay well. Thank you.